Key point one, why you should be your own therapist. Life is not a piece of cake. It's challenging and full of surprises, some of which bring pain and exhaustion. Many visit therapists to overcome depression, increase self-esteem, fight their fears, or find peace in this busy and stressful world. Although people understand what therapy is, many still avoid or neglect it. First of all, many believe therapy is an expensive service. Secondly, many still consider therapy shameful, meaning modern society still lacks education on this topic. So if they make an appointment or have regular visits, they still try to hide it from their friends and coworkers. Unfortunately, many overlook the advantages of therapeutic sessions and struggle with their problems in silence. Going to a doctor when your body hurts is essential, so is visiting a therapist when your soul is in turmoil. Nonetheless, therapy is not the only way to help yourself. Understanding and applying various psychological tools can transform your life and bring harmony and peace. But books, podcasts, or psychological advice will only work if you want to change. Your willingness to discover, learn, and transform determines your success. Two more important aspects are discipline and consistency. Therapy is effective because it's regular. Therefore, the exercises and techniques you'll learn will help only if you make your appointments. However, remember, self-help and self-analysis are not substitutes for professional help when you struggle with significant issues like childhood trauma, grief, and depression. Complex cases require radical solutions. Are you ready to transform your mindset to stay in tune with your needs and enjoy a peaceful and balanced life? Then grab a pen and a notebook and invite yourself to 10-minute daily sessions with you as your therapist and your client. Key point two. What is your story? Many mistakenly believe that therapy looks like chit-chat with a friend. If so, most sessions would end after the first few minutes because therapeutic help requires radical honesty and some people are unprepared for it. Therapy does not make your life a stress-free fairy tale, but teaches you how to manage issues easier and quicker. While you can't change the events, you can alter your reactions. It's within your power to respond in a way that minimizes discomfort or pain from minor issues. So how does therapy work? By realizing and changing three levels of your psyche. On the surface of your mind are thoughts and feelings that come spontaneously or as a result of cognitive rumination. For example, you repeatedly think that you must lose weight. The middle level represents beliefs, norms, and regulations from your family, culture, religion, or experiences. They are harder to trace, but even more powerful. For instance, the underlying reason for your desire to get thinner can be the societal demand to look like celebrities or models. The deepest layer reflects the foundation of your mindset, your core beliefs that include safety, lovability, hope, and self-worth. The presence or lack of these elements will determine your behavior and thinking. For example, you will be critical of your body if you believe you are unlovable. Your core beliefs are the truths you learned in childhood. Since we know how therapy functions, let's discover how you can dive into that process independently. The first step to becoming your therapist is writing your story of life. Thus, find a quiet and cozy place and take a notebook. The process comprises four steps. One, draft the timeline. Think of the experiences that shaped you as a person. Some will float into your mind, while others will take more time to extract. Many people suppress their painful traumas. Others learn to ruminate and go into detail, thus staying stuck in the past. Abstain from these extremes and remain objective in your story. Positive memories are more pleasant, but not more valuable than negative ones. 2. Rewrite your draft, changing, adding, or deleting the necessary parts. Ensure that you don't hide or sugarcoat some events. 3. Describe how it makes you feel. Be honest with yourself, even if your emotions seem odd. 4. Tell your story to a close person who will listen to it respectfully. Key point 3. Build a solid foundation. Enjoy a strong mind. Writing your story involved collecting all the pieces of your life puzzle. Now it's time to look at the whole picture and see how it correlates with your life. Answer these two essential questions. What issues do I struggle with at this time? Most people's problems come from four principal aspects of the deepest mind level. Not feeling safe. Some grew up in threatening or dangerous environments, from families constantly plagued by conflicts to countries terrorized by war or oppression. 
Discrimination based on sex, race, nationality, and religion can also force a person into survival mode when they perceive everyone as an enemy and are extra conscious about potential hazards. Hopelessness. The feeling of hopelessness often has its base in a scarcity of food, shelter, or even love in a person's childhood. It can also signify a pessimistic environment one grows up in, learning that this world is dark and full of hardships. The problem is that critical, catastrophic, or inflexible ways of thinking and negative emotional responses often become automatic. Owen O'Kane Lack of self-worth A person's constant self-doubt, self-criticism, and feeling that they are not enough negatively affects their self-worth. Individuals struggling with this issue try to suppress their pain through alcohol or food or attempt to prove their worth through people-pleasing and sacrificing their needs for the sake of others. Feeling unlovable. Many people suffer in this void because they did not receive enough care in childhood. Society and culture aggravate the issue by turning love into a cult. Nonetheless, love is much deeper than a picture in a rom-com. It's a sense of connection with other human beings. When someone feels unlovable, they might overlook that some people don't know how to express their feelings. As a result, they may unfairly blame themselves for others' inability to communicate affection. Awareness and recognition bring solutions. The second question to ask yourself is, what parts of my story led to these problems? Look at your timeline, keeping in mind the issues you're struggling with right now. Analyze your experiences and their origin. For instance, you may notice phobias that signify feeling unsafe or problems in your relationships arising from questioning your lovability. What events could cause such a traumatic response? How did your parents and friends affect your security or hopelessness? How did school impact your self-worth? Think of every such experience through the lens of your current situation, and you will connect many dots in the map of your life. Key point four. Knowledge without action loses its value. When you realize your issues, you must set a goal. What do you want to change? Is there a specific area to work on? What internal and external transformation do you wish to observe? Be ready to start a journey with commitment and patience. The necessity of an immediate result, just as rumination over your problems without particular actions, can have adverse effects. Moreover, avoid putting a deadline on the outcomes of your psychological progress. You cannot overcome childhood trauma by next Monday or develop confidence in two days. Some things just need time. Small things bring you closer to big goals. Therapy is effective when a person works on their problems. Principal actions of self-treatment include changing your patterns. Some negative thoughts are automated responses to a trigger like an event or a person. The task is to question this stream, see how it relates to reality, and substitute it with positive and constructive alternatives. You are more than your thoughts. Altering your norms and beliefs. Must and should are the principal words you use when applying the rules you have created for yourself because you learned most of them as a child. For instance, you get love and praise if you comply, but some beliefs require more flexibility or transformation than others. Therefore, list all your musts and see which ones restrict or burden you. Then change or replace them to live more freely and happily. Engaging in healthier behavior. Sometimes a person confuses fun or rest with a hideaway. Overeating, watching Netflix until morning, oversleeping, or abusing alcohol are signs of mental distress one is trying to escape. Other behaviors are latent, like frequent conflicts, childish reactions, self-sabotage, or avoidance. If you notice any of these behaviors, think about how you can loosen their grip or replace them. For example, if you use sleep to avoid facing your emotions, try to meditate instead. It will help you calm down and solve the situation instead of ignoring it. Talking gets the ball rolling. Action brings about change. Owen O'Kane. Immersing yourself in life. While life can present challenges, it can also provide solutions. Hobbies, relationships, or work can become meditative or therapeutic if you enjoy it. When you face a challenge or a severe issue, you will likely disengage and float in your suffering. Nonetheless, the way out lies in living. Key point five. Kickstart your day. For many people, mornings are the busiest part of the day. The shuttle runs from prepping breakfast to making the bed to getting the children ready. Some get up earlier to meditate, exercise, journal, and plan their day. Such a routine is beneficial and pleasant because everyone craves a healthy dose of alone time. Peaceful mornings make a harmonious life. The first four minutes of your self-therapy must occur at the beginning of your day. 
you can hide in the bathroom with earphones or stay in the car after dropping off your children. This part of therapy programs you to live through the day positively and constructively. 1. Check in with your mind and body. Ask yourself how you're doing today. Close your eyes and focus on your emotions and thoughts. Maybe you notice some sadness or anxiety. Don't suppress or judge it. Moreover, your body absorbs and buries a lot of stress and pain. So be extra attentive to your physical sensations and what they tell you. 2. Ask yourself what needs you have today. How often have you forced your body or mind into survival mode, neglecting its needs because of your duties? How many times did you smile when you wanted to cry? Ignoring your needs may lead to disastrous consequences affecting your health and well-being. Getting to know what you want is the primary step to getting it. When you determine what you need right now, think of how to give it to yourself. Remember, loving yourself is not selfish. You are your dearest person, so you must care for yourself as you would for your child. 3. Express gratitude and intention. Negative thoughts can sometimes plague your mind, and the most potent remedy is noticing what you should be thankful for. Your brain is wired to see things you don't have, but that's where you must take control and highlight all the goodies you enjoy. The intention is self-programming to react or behave a certain way, like, today I will be kind and compassionate to myself and others. Such a strategy helps you remember what truly matters and pushes you in the right direction until your action becomes a habit. 4. Relax your mind and body. Take a minute to close your eyes, breathe, and ground yourself. You can also repeat a calming word that will help you tap into a meditative state like peace or joy. Key point 6. Sharing positivity makes you its generator. Stress and busy schedules affect your life in an invisible but constant way. Over time, you may realize you cannot or don't want to get up from the couch and go to work. You might also notice that you have no energy to care for yourself and others. Such burnout can eventually turn into depression. Therefore, giving yourself support and rest is vital before negativity sweeps you off your feet. The next three minutes of therapy must take place during your day. Taking a break and refocusing is critical to ensure your well-being, mental balance, resilience, and strength. Focus on the following tasks. Analyze and transform your negative patterns. Think of the destructive habit or thought you tapped into today. Maybe you responded aggressively to your supervisor's feedback or tapped into self-loathing. Ask yourself what triggered you to behave or think this way. Find the underlying beliefs that pushed you toward that particular action or thought. Changing your patterns without altering your beliefs is like carrying water in a sieve. Reflecting on your behavior and habits helps you understand and reconstruct them. So when you realize the reason, your task is to alter the root belief and avoid repeating the same action. You can also implement the intention to react differently by imagining the situation and visualizing the correct response. Recount your healthy routines. Estimate the healthy activities you have engaged in so far. Since it's the middle of the day, you may have exercised, run, eaten a healthy breakfast or lunch, painted, played with the children, or volunteered in the local library. This minute of therapy should reflect how active you are in your life. Increasing others' life quality will enhance your own. Share your kindness with others. Helping and caring for others makes you feel valuable and strengthens your self-worth. Moreover, it helps you forget your worries and focus on compassion. Little acts of kindness like buying food for a homeless person, talking to a friend who feels blue, or supporting your loved ones will make you feel proud and needed. It's an essential part of therapy that can make you happier and calmer. Did you know, according to an American Psychological Association article from October 2022, two in five adults reported that they can't bring themselves to do anything when stressed. Key point seven. Round up your day to live a meaningful life. How often have you counted sheep for hours because of an intruding thought in your head? Maybe you were planning your day or contemplating the water cooler talk with your colleagues. Just like mornings, evenings also need routines and rituals to be effective. Usually, the last thought you have before sleep will be the first one you wake up with. Therefore, your therapy's ending part must become your bedtime routine. 1. Journal your challenge and let it go. Note down the stressful moments in the following way. Recollect and describe the event as objectively as possible. Stick to the facts. Write your interpretation of the experience. Give an account of how your perception affected your reaction, thoughts, and behavior. Summarize the negative patterns you noticed. Replace them with positive alternatives and let go of the experience altogether.
This exercise lets you stay focused on releasing negativity and moving on with your life. If necessary, close your eyes and imagine that your problem drifts away and has no power over you. A good morning starts with a beautiful evening. Two, find your day's lesson. This part focuses on finding an event. It may be a phrase your friend said or a series of thoughts provoked by a scene in a book. Anything that made you think or feel unusual. Ask yourself what it can teach you. For example, you may suddenly realize that your partner cares about you or that you need more rest. Such revelations may seem simple, but they are vital tips to enhance your life. Three, cleanse, energize, and end your day. Take a bowl and immerse your hands in it. When you wash them, visualize that you cleanse away all the hardships, pain, or struggles. This ritual allows you to reset yourself mentally. Moreover, in many cultures, it's an honoring ritual with a strong, soothing effect on your body and mind. Connect with the greater power. It can be God, the universe, or whatever you believe in. You don't have to be religious for this practice. Look up in the sky and imagine how small your problem seems in the background of the infinite sky. Meditation, prayer, or other spiritual practices are highly beneficial in preserving mental peace, resilience, and hope in challenging times. Acknowledge your day and still your mind. Let the silence calm and steady you. Now you are ready to end your day. Conclusion Happiness and peace start from a balance in the mind. Many people mistakenly seek both in the external world. They drown worries in alcohol, forget their troubles in relationships, or try to fill the void with someone's validation. Nonetheless, none of it will work long term because when you try to avoid negativity, your mind prioritizes it. So you end up thinking about problems but never solving them. Therapy aims to learn to cope with stress by discovering the roots of it. Self-therapy relies on methods from different branches of psychology. It may sound unrealistic. How can 10 minutes transform your life? Fortunately, it can. This technique turns the spotlight to the inner part of you so that you can care, support, and love yourself properly. For many, therapy looks like picking your brain for money, but it just isn't so. It's a tool to enhance and enrich your life with the positivity, resilience, and peace you already have inside. It involves discomfort and effort, but it's always worth it. Try this. Make the 10-minute self-therapy a habit with these tips. 1. Set your alarm clock earlier and start your day with self-analysis and positive thoughts. 2. Use a separate journal for your end-of-the-day conclusions and lessons. 3. Choose the same time every day for your walk and the middle section of self-therapy. 4. If you get a significant insight, note it down. 5. Keep a record of your progress. Notice how your mindset and behavior changed over a week or month. It will keep you motivated.